Hi everyone, welcome to this year's Halloween special, aka my first Halloween special on my like four years on YouTube. So today I got a little bit festive by dressing up and probably nobody can recognize me. I'm dressed up as my own character, obviously. So I'm dressed up as Harrison. I have his earring, his little drop earring that Lonan gifts him in like chapter four of moth work. I did my hair up a little bit. So I got the like Harrison long shaggy hair vibe. And then he kind of has like curly hair like me a little bit. Then obviously I have like the brown jacket. I don't have a brown leather jacket. So I may do his little angel necklace, which I think I wore in another video. Technically he gave it to Lonan, but he did wear it for like the beginning of moth work until Lonan stole it from him. He usually just wears a white t-shirt. This shirt's a little bit special because I'll stand up. It is um, actually a moth work shirt that my uh, best friend Ashley made for me. Leftover balloon from our birthday that Sarah drew. She really wanted credit on this. A beautiful jack-o'-lantern. And then I drew this not as beautiful ghost, but they're really cute. Oh, and also this creepy. This creepy sculpture that I made in high school, it's a tree of heads, if you couldn't tell. I thought, you know, it's just been sitting on top of like my family's refrigerator for the last few years. Nobody asks questions. So today we're going to be writing two spooky descriptions. I thought I would theme it some Halloween themed images that we're gonna work off of some photo prompts today. Will I be able to write a description today? I don't know, I feel like I'm a little bit burned out with writing. So this is gonna be honest talk, but also kind of give you insight on how I pick and choose specific details, concrete details to build the images that I am creating in descriptions, particularly we'll be working off of two photos, like I said. So let's jump right into it. The first image is of this house. It looks like a mansion. A man appears to be walking toward this house thing. I'm not sure, but he seems to be carrying two bags. Kind of looks like a bag of potatoes. <laughs> so I picked like an overall kind of landscape vibe where there are some things to pick out like in the background. You can see there's trees and then there's obviously this fencing here. And so the second creepy image is less creepy and a little bit cute, but also kind of creepy. It is a black cat. I think it's a black cat. I mean, it's kind of grayish sitting in a tombstone. There's, I think these are ivy. Um, and then there's obviously some tombstones and the cat's pretty cute. All right, so I've put up a split screen between the first image we're going to be working on and a Word document just so we can look at both of them. What I think about when I'm writing descriptions is color. There's a lot of color, obviously, in this photo. There's the blue and then there's this kind of grayish blue of the building and then this salmon pink of the lighting and then there's the yellow of the man's, I'm gonna call it a potato bag, but it might not be potatoes. And so there's also a lot of texture and I think texture is a really interesting thing to work with in description as well. You have like the brick that's kind of like a gritty, almost like sand-like texture of the, the building's walls. And then you have a mossy kind of texture with the trees that are blending into the background. Then we have some of this like more spider-like, claw-like tree on the left-hand side. So how am I gonna start with this? So right now I'm feeling a bit stuck on how to start. Starting things is actually kind of one of the most difficult parts of writing for me. And so what I do when I'm stuck is I have a word list, pulling up one of my word lists and looking for an adjective, a noun, something interesting uh, that I can get the ball started with. All right, immediately I found a word that I like and that's dredges. And I really like this blue here. So I would call it blue, but I feel like there's a more interesting word like cyan almost, cyan dredges. Is this a mansion? I'll just pop up a thesaurus. Sometimes I use this one, which is word book. Chateau, <laughs> manor. I don't really know anything about houses. I'm just like picking a word that I like the best. And that's another tip, choose sound. Obviously, if you are trying to describe a specific thing, don't just choose a word that sounds prettier. But you know, sound is, is a really great thing that I like to keep in mind, music has. I'm gonna say manor because I feel like that's a little bit of a nicer sound than mansion, you know? You know, manor is nice. Cyan dredges the manor. How about this? Cyan dredges the manor in foggy dusk. I don't love that, but we're gonna move on to the next sentence. It's trees, cause I love trees. Jut behind the iron gate. And so right now I'm feeling like I kinda wanna dip into a simile. You can bet your button there's gonna be 400 similes in this paragraph. So trees jut behind the iron gate. What are like the bones in your fingers called? I could say like detached <laughs> metacarpals. Spelt that wrong. Is that a word? Metacarpals, okay. 
Okay, so Cyan dredges the manor in foggy dusk, trees ju- be- behind the iron gate. You know, it's kind of awkward still. I haven't really gotten to the flow of it, but you know, this is realistic. Since they like wisping into, that's not how you spell that word. Okay. Okay, that word doesn't exist. Okay. Um, into, I don't want to say fog again. I don't, I'll say cloud. I don't, what I'm trying to describe is this like kind of puffy looking tree at the back that's kind of blotted. That probably doesn't come across, but I feel like this is the most stale description of all time. <laughs> this could show up in my like editing my old writing video. Cyan dredges the manor in foggy dusk. Trees jut behind the iron gate like detached metacarpals wisping into cloud. I hate that. I'm gonna do something kind of artsy and like me. Like obviously this doesn't make sense, but frothing in the distance. To me, it looks like kind of like milk froth, you know, like this little puffy blurry cloud. So frothing is <laughs> What we pick, frothing in the distance. A man carries a uh, burlap sack of russet potatoes. The manor glows. The citrine work, like what's an orange thing? Manor glows citrine, or you could just say orange, whatever. Manor glows citrine. Glows is kind of like a lame word. Yeah, glows works, whatever. It's windows unshuttered dominoes are we gonna it's windows are we gonna use a metaphor or a simile it's win windows like unshuttered dominoes we're using a double simile who knew uh, i did i haven't described the house itself i can like put it sits two stories it probably is bigger than two stories but i don't know anything about you know things that relate to math two stories crumbling concrete clogged gutters i don't know i don't know okay so it has cyan dredges the manor in foggy dusk it sits two stories crumbly concrete clogged gutters oh god it's bad trees drop behind the iron gate like detached metacarpals frothing in the distance oh my god that that just does not even make sense a man carries a burlap sack of rusted potatoes the manor glows citrine its windows like unshuttered dominoes brings a I'm gonna say burlap bag of russet potatoes. He delivers, I'm gonna repeat the word again, a bag every Saturday, wordless, like the, I, I like am feeling instinct to use the word fritz. <laughs> I'm just gonna use it even though it doesn't make sense, like the fritz, fall, autumn, autumn is a nicer word, wind, wordless, soundless maybe. Because wind won't, I don't know. Guys, bear with me. I'm going to critique this after so like you can see how bad this was. <laughs> Soundless, like the fritz of autumn wind. There will be no guests. Okay, we're going to end it there. So the final description is cyan dredges the manor in foggy dusk. It sits two stories crumbling concrete clogged gutters. The trees jut behind the iron gate like detached metacarpals frothing in the distance. A man carries a burlap bag of russet potatoes. He delivers a bag every Saturday, soundless like the fritz of autumn wind. The manor glows citrine, its windows like unshuttered dominoes. There will be no guests. Okay, so here are some problems with this. So cyan dredges the manor in foggy dusk. This uh, this is okay. Um, back when I thought that that would be the worst of it. It's its two stories, crumbling concrete clogged gutters this detail to me doesn't work it's it's two stories cr uh crumbling concrete clogged gutters to me this detail doesn't work in like the progression of the sentence it sits two stories clogged gutters for example if um crumbling concrete was removed so that's a problem trees jut behind the iron gate like detached metacarpals frothing in the distance so the frothing verb is supposed to link with trees but right now it's linking with metacarpals um so it's like the metacarpals are frothing in the distance when the trees are supposed to i could say trees froth in the distance i don't know in the distance uh jutting behind the iron gate like detached metacarpals is maybe how i would fix that it's still not the best but a man carries a burlap bag of russet potatoes i i'd like to know more about him like what, what does he look like? I don't know, a man wearing XXX, I don't know. He delivers a bag every Saturday, soundless like the fritz of autumn wind. Obviously bag, we have repeated that word twice. I, I'm trying to think, he makes this delivery, like he makes this exact delivery every Saturday, soundless like the fritz of autumn wind. This is, 
<laughs> I'm gonna highlight Fritz. Uh, this is kind of a funny description. I don't know, like the Fritz of autumn wind. You guys let me know what you think. I feel like that's kind of funny. The manor glows citrine, its windows like unshuttered dominoes. There will be no guests. So it's fine. This is the first creepy description. I'm gonna give you guys creative liberty. If you would like to add on to this in the comments or write your own, I would love to see what you come up with. Or if you want to take this really fast, shitty description that's spooky, you know, it's still spooky, and edit it into your own based off what I've said or things that you've noticed, let me know and paste your edits in the comments too. But that's gonna be the first one. Okay, so let's move on to the next description, which is of this cat. When I engage with like an object, so in this case, the cat that's engaging in an atmosphere, um, I usually like to start with like the person. I don't start with the person with the last one. I guess he wasn't really a big part of it, but we're gonna describe the cat first. So I am gonna just start like with the cat belongs to no one. That's not really a description, but to me, it's really hard to write just straight up description. I had to do that for a class. It was so hard. It dominates the graveyard because it's lived, lived here, there. I don't know, there? I don't know. <laughs> for a century, I'm so bad at grammar. The cat belongs to no one. It dominates the graveyard because it's lived there for a century. It's fur, charcoal maybe? That's kind of like a basic word, but whatever. Like a scrape of what is something that is like, like I can scrape that is black in color. Is sable dark? Oh, it is. I've always thought sable was brown. I don't know, like a scrape of sable. There I am with the similes again. It's fur charcoal, like a scrape of sable. Groomed by an unknown hand. A bell clings to its neck and rings like symphony or you could say a symphony i don't know i'm using this for like musicality purposes like and rings like a symphony sounds like rings in symphony i don't know i'm trying to get some don't judge me a bell a bell a belly i mean a bell clings to its neck and rings in symphony i would have liked to say something and rings in symphony after every step but like i don't know it's already clunky oh let's let's give her a gender her eyes to not slices coins of celery i don't know maybe this is like not literal and you're like picturing a cat like with celery eyes i don't know i mean celery in color her eyes two coins of celery. She looks so cute, but she like looks like intense. Marked with oval pupil. I don't know, this is bad. This is bad. This is a character description gone wrong class, more like. She sits on a headstone ringed. I mean like, yeah, ringed with vines. I don't know, I'll just say ivy. I think it might not be ivy, but I'm just gonna call it ivy. She sits on a headstone ringed with ivy this is her throat okay bear with me bear with me a cross stakes behind her but she is the holiest thing on sight this is hard this is hard i usually am very good at description it's my favorite part but like writing description with like no story attached is hard okay the cat belongs to no one it dominates the graveyard because it's lived there for a century it's fur charcoal like a scrape of sable groomed by an unknown hand a bell clings to its neck and rings in symphony her eyes two coins of celery marked with oval pupils she sits on a headstone ringed with ivy this is her throne a cross sticks behind her but she's the holiest thing on sight okay so the problems i have with this the cat belongs to no one it dominates the graveyard because it's lived there for a straight century okay like this is not description <laughs> whatever it's fur charcoal like a scrape of sable i feel like i could say it's char it's fur sable instead of using this uh simile so i don't know what you guys would say i could do for that instead of having two color descriptors groomed by an unknown hand is kind of an interesting because this cat is obviously very well kept um and obviously belongs to somebody i think I, I don't know i don't know the backstory of this photo but she sits on a headstone ringed with ivy i like ringed with ivy i think that's pretty this is her throne a cross stakes behind her, but she is the holiest thing on the site. I feel like we could learn more about what the cross looks like. And I feel like we could also learn more about what the headstone looks like. A headstone, um, she's not sitting on the one that's marked F. Pushman Hanwell. And I feel like it would have been like cooler if she was. So I could have said she sits on a headstone marked 
Ed, whatever his name is. But I think this works. This is her throne. So those are kind of my problems with this. So if you guys want to write your own description based off this cat, uh, leave them in the comments. Or if you want to rewrite mine so it's less garbage and maybe more than like two sentences, that would be fun. But I hope you guys enjoyed these spooky descriptions. I wanted to do something just a little bit fun, uh, show you guys me not knowing how to write, uh, and also sort of give you a little bit of a tiny critique of my own work and give you open space to do what you guys want in the comments if you would like to roast me sure that's fine that's gonna be this year's halloween special my first halloween special ever i hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope you're having a spooky halloween and staying inside because it's coronavirus and write your own spooky description and leave them in the comments so i hope you guys enjoyed this video hope you like my costume as harrison my icon i will see you in the next one bye